Over the past 12 months, slug numbers have exceeded expectations with populations growing at unprecedented levels across Australia. It's been a massive year for slugs. We've seen them all in the traditional crops in the traditional areas. We've seen them in new areas north of Wagga Wagga, in canola crops particularly, but there's been also plenty of slug damage in cotton in the cotton wheat rotations, particularly along those heavier soils where they're irrigating. With moisture availability a key regulator of slug populations, the triple La Nina meant a series of wet winters and wet springs providing ideal conditions for slug numbers to build up. These wet conditions extended their breeding period, resulting in more slugs in areas where they've never been seen before. The black keeled slugs are the traditional ones down through New South Wales, Northern Victoria, South Australia, Western Australia. Even in Western Australia, black keel slugs were a real problem this year. As well as greater numbers this year, slug damage has also been observed across more crop types. Crops are at their most vulnerable to slugs as seedlings, and some growers didn't predict this onslaught or put in place protective measures as a result. So we're seeing black keel slugs damaging lentils, never heard of before. The slugs were that bad, where they commonly get black keeled slugs in the southeast of South Australia, were also attacking fibre beans. We've always said in the past that slugs don't eat fibre beans. To help growers manage the impact of slugs, GRDC has been hosting a series of management workshops. This year, after a couple of really wet years, is we're actually finding them on our freer drained better soils. That be a fair call. The aim of these gatherings is to teach growers how to best invest in strategies to protect their crops and introduce innovative on-farm control options for pests. I love the interaction because I learn much more. Every time I get in a new environment, I learn something new and I learn more from the growers probably than they ever learn from me. In the wake of one of the largest infestations of slugs, GRDC is arming growers with the tools to better identify types of slugs and understand the key mitigation techniques on farm to limit future damage. The two main species the most damaging is the black keeled slug, which has the keel running all the way along its back. The slug that you poke with, with your pocket knife is the reticulated or grey field slug, is the second most damaging. And then to a lesser extent, that meadow or marsh slug, we call the brown field slug, is less damaging. But in those summer crops, is causing some problems. No single control method will provide complete protection against pest slugs. An integrated approach is recommended with natural enemies and biological controls, tools that growers can use to regulate slug numbers. The natural enemies you find in the paddock are very important in regulating the slug numbers so that growers at crop establishment are only dealing with 50 slugs, not 500 slugs. Some of those natural enemies may include carabid beetles, which I happen to do my PhD on. It was awesome. But if you don't have enough slugs in the paddock, of course the carabids don't have enough food. So sometimes things get out of balance. So creating stable equilibriums is really important. There are also a lot of lot smaller natural enemies, such as nematodes. Previous investments have looked at nematodes to augment the actual biological control. And I think it's really exciting, the use of ciliates and that project funded by GRDC. Baiting is still the only chemical control option to regulate and control slug numbers. So it's important growers take the right approach with this method to ensure the best results. The main principles for molluscicide baits to protect the crop is the target, the slug or snail has to encounter the bait, so it needs to be attractive. The target has to be active and you also need a certain number of pellet points to ensure encounter. Once the target has encountered the bait, it needs to consume a lethal dose. 
So the active ingredient used is important. The concentration of active ingredient in that is important. Palatability is very important. And also the amount of bait that you've got out in the paddock is very important for the number of slugs or snails that you're dealing with. Some crops, such as canola, are more susceptible to slug damage than others. This is where growers can integrate cultural controls, establishing crops quickly to avoid emerging slugs. There are a number of cultural controls that fit with biological and chemical controls. With the removal of burning to remove the stubble and cultivation, some of the other one percenters that make a big difference are sowing vigorous canola varieties, also ensuring that when the canola is sown, it's rolled afterwards. I think one of the big messages out of the workshops is, is people are not aware and not using rolling as a very effective tool. The main slug species differ in appearance and can coexist in the same area. Incorrect identification can lead to ineffective control and more damage. It's with that in mind that GRDC has introduced a go-to back pocket guide for growers to help differentiate and identify the most common slugs found in Australian cropping regions. Extension of research knowledge is vital that the rubber hits the road. And so working directly with agronomists and growers in the paddock has seen that knowledge transferred to where it is needed. With slugs in particular, it is all context specific how you apply that knowledge in the paddock for good return on investment for growers. Mm -hmm.